All right, so it is just after six on um, Thursday, August 4th, and I'm gonna call the regular select board meeting to order. Uh, first item is set adjust agenda. Um, I have one thing. We already have an executive session uh, pursuant to 1 VSA 313 to discuss personnel matters. Uh, we actually need two of those. So um, we're just gonna have we're just going to run them back to back there and uh, so do you need a motion uh, well just depends what else do we have just, yeah. any other are there any other changes does anybody need to sorry Wiz I got you penned in uh, any other changes additions deletions especially deletions <laughs> no. please deletions motion right. move to uh, uh, approve the amended agenda All right. second all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, so we have a second executive session at the end. Um, uh, next is communication from the audience. Is anybody here to discuss something with the board that's not on our agenda? Bethany? No, I just oh. said hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm here with downtown. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, next, um, select board to approve minutes from last time, which was July the 21st. I can motion to approve those minutes as written. Second. Any discussion, changes? I thought they were good. Nope, that was great. Mm -hmm. All right, thank as you. So all in favor of uh, approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And that goes that way. Um, next is a uh, town manager report given by david upson who right. is here with us well we were just up at the creamery road for the composting kickoff meeting uh, which was well attended great yep um so that should air on um the local television station after being edited hopefully so one of the one of the composting i got carried away again road. Yeah. not every day you have a compost tasting <laughs> right. Um, all right. It's a good so, thing too. So, uh, I'll start with you know we somebody gave us some money, so we received uh, twenty six hundred fifty dollars in the national opioid settlement that we opted in last year. Um, so they're starting to divvy out those payments. Um, we didn't get as much as some of the bigger cities, but we got something. Um, and Opie, just a quick question. That just goes to the PD, right? It just like. No, it just goes. I, I believe it just goes into to the town. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Great. It's not associated with the police department. Okay. So we can basically like put it in the general fund or mm -hmm. put it. Okay. Right yeah. Great. Yeah. Hopefully we don't go out and spend it on heroin. Right. Yeah. Um, so I have been looking into. So this is kind of in um, response to the boil water notice. I know that was kind of a big um, deal for a lot of people. Um, I had been looking into town-wide messaging systems um, to, to invest in, um, it's like instant notification systems. Um, the most recent demo that I looked into was about 6000 I got a quote for it, it was about $6,000 a year, which is, um, that, that's with a 5% increase each year um, with a, with a $2,900 upfront fee. Um, a town our size isn't really big enough to sustain this, and, and we're not going to be putting out that much messaging. I mean, we would use it, but I just don't think that it's it would be a good a, way, a, a, <clears throat> a good bang for our buck. So, what, I mean, what's expected of us as a town? You posted it on Front Porch Forum and, it, and on the, the town website. website. On the town website. We put on the radio station. On the radio station. I yeah. mean, what more? Well, in this day and age, Danny, people want information immediately. Well, yeah, I want things. Yes, I yeah. agree with you. But yeah. so there are. <laughs> you got to be practical in what we're trying to do. Here. There's technology out there. We so as I'm looking into this, um, one was put in place a few years ago. On our town website, there's a instant notification button, and people have to sign up for it. And um, we had like 30 people sign up for it. So I think once I figure out how that works and maybe send out a couple of test notifications, we can really, and that's through just Google, through Google. Oh, perfect. So, so we it's just might, a, like a list of. Right. Yeah. So, but people need to sign, like we need people's information 
people do need to push them to the, the problem, website to sign up. The problem yes. that you're going to have is the people that are complaining are not going to be the people right. that sign up. Right. So I'm, I'm more concerned is. about the, there's a couple businesses that didn't get called. Um, and that, that well, I have no problem with doing something like you know, we need to notify certain people because certainly the people want to be notified. Yeah, right. and we can contact them right. and, and say, hey, this is this is what we're willing to do, and this is how we're going to notify you. So I just want to get it out there that we are working on something to notify people faster, so they're not having to tune into the radio or wander by the post office. Um, I want something that we get out there. I read my Facebook post. Is this right? Is this investment, this six thousand dollar investment, would that be something like a robocall, like the way the school does it? Basically, like it'd be that. It, not only that, like but, would it go to everybody in town, no matter if they signed up or not? Basically? No, you'd still have to sign up for it. So, okay. so basically, this is something that would be on the like the back end of our website. Yeah. So you go to the town website, and it immediately, you know, you go to certain websites, it immediately pops up. Sign up for newsletters, or this would be sign up for for all notifications. And you'd either you'd get um, like a text message, yeah. or a f you can get an email. I, it's not really a phone call, so that you know. You're saying we already have that, but we may already have something we in the work. We already have something in the work. We just need to work. Yeah. Perfect. So, I could see it being really useful in the winter for the like winter plowing or like Parking bands, bands or whatever or, right. that kind of thing. Yeah. Although right now it's signing up for water, wastewater. Maybe there's a way to partner with the electric department, like if there's a power outage or something, like depending on what they use to contact people. Like they don't, they, they don't, don't, they contact, don't contact, contact anybody. People, but maybe they would want everybody to, like, contact them because yeah. yeah. they have the contact info for everybody. I mean, true. Yeah. They just might be. They might be interested in part okay. partnering in something like it. I would hope so. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um. So then, uh, Matt Krajewski from NEMC, our assessor, uh, had a conversation and our town-wide reappraisal, grantless reappraisal, is scheduled for 2025. Um, this is gonna be mandated by the state if we reach a certain threshold with our uh, grant list. Uh, our current assessors, which is New England Municipal Consultants, have space to schedule us for, for a year early, 2024. Um, I believe Casey had mentioned it was about, I think it was 120, 120 to 140,000 uh, that um, we got a quote for. Um, Don't we get some help we, from the state for that? For paying for that? Or am I dreaming? Why would we do it a year earlier, Tommy? Well, because, so, type of thing? because it's um, right now, I With believe our, our current common level of appraisal is yeah. about 88% of uh, in six. 86 and they only allow 88 when you get, and a half or something no, like when you that get to 85 close. yeah when you drop below 85 then the state mandates that you do it like right now so they're backed up so the idea is let's try to get on the schedule and get ahead of it a bit so the question is it is it is um it's a large expense don't we set and aside money for we do that? oh okay we do yeah um so i'm asking if we should be putting this out to bid like requesting a proposal. Um, this would be outside of the scope that we currently contract with them. It's recommended by the state. I don't know. Yeah. I think we've done that in the past. Yeah. yeah. Haven't we? I think we've gone a bit on it. That's like yeah. the best practice to right. do. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. Um, so we'll get that going on that. So really, if, if we get us a lower bid come in it could we could be pushing that out to 2025 or further out which might be a problem with the state so there's i think it would be fair to have to have the same time frame right the bid right? yeah right. or or maybe the time frame is just a factor like the prices those two years yeah yeah you know when can you do it and how much yeah right i don't know and then there were other factors last time too i don't remember exactly what they were but there were other things that we considered I think we just did it. It does. It's 2016. We've been doing this too long. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, And then the next thing we've is... We've worn to a UL. Can, can you... Uh, I, what'd you say? I said, we've worn to a UL. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're still here. Uh, can the board authorize me to sign a contract with North Beast Kingdom Community Broadband related to the disbursement of the town ARPA funds for the investment in their fiber to home project? 
This is a, a large amount of money. Um, I reviewed the contract. Several other towns have reviewed the contract. It's been vetted. Um, nor, and then, so I just want your blessing to, because we committed those ARPA funds, I want your blessing to be able to sign that contract. Do we need to have that be an agenda item? or is No, it it's, here, we, here we are, we're okay. just going to roll with it. So if, if My only question is, is I, in our report on ARPA fund distribution, that's still going to be okay? I, you know what I'm saying? If Time frame wise for the funds? That they are requesting, yes. Yeah. The time frame is yeah. fine. Yeah. And you mean because we've only got half of it now, so right. like signing the contract, we oh, said we yeah. want to save it because we're already. The, I think the second round of ARPA funds is about to be dispersed. Yeah. yeah. Make a motion that we authorize OB to sign the NEK Community Broadband contract for ARPA fund distribution. Second. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. And then a uh, couple of public service announcements. I'm going to keep these to a minimum. I could go all day long with public <laughs> service announcements. Crossing near the diner. Um, we got to stop doing that. And if you see people doing that, crossing the road near yeah, the, the crosswalk? crosswalk? No. Oh. No. Oh, they're on the road the crosswalk. crosswalk. They're yeah. crossing right at the intersection. It's uh, very dangerous. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and I've taken phone calls, and it's not only people just visiting Hardwick, Hardwick it's also local folks. So yep. try to change your, your habit, because you're going to get smoked. There's a, Cars come up around that corner pretty fast. Um, and it happened actually on the other side of the road last, last fall. When it gets darker, it's hard to see people. Um, trash receptacles on Main Street. So there's been a request to put more trash receptacles on Main Street. I say we don't put trash more. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to try to increase the frequency on uh, Thursdays or Fridays, removing that trash because it's the more trash receptacles we put out there, the more people are going to throw away their trash. Yep. Go ahead. I knew you'd. I knew you'd. Uh, <laughs> the deal with the trash. Yeah. Since the only one that ever overflows is the one I'm by positive. That and that I did a little investigation so today. The, so I can the thing on that up yep. there is that the deal was that they were to change it out. Yeah. When it got full. Right. That's why there is spare garbage bags in the bottom. That's of the right. They were gonna, I remember that. They yes. were going to change it out. Have, have they not been? Thank you. Been that. Okay. No, they have. I'll follow up with that. I didn't know that. that Thank would, you. You, you, you didn't ask me. I'm glad. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about a lot of things. I can't. I can't keep everything straight. And they may, they may have been changing it and noticing what the trash is not from, well, largely not from them, but it's like people clean out their cars. Oh God, yes. And putting yes. little bags of yeah. garbage yeah, there's in actually there. a couple okay. other businesses there yeah. that potentially yeah. generate trash. So yeah. maybe the right. trash. We need to share that right. with them. But that was a deal when right. it was yeah. put out there yeah. that we yeah. left garbage bags in the bottom when it did get full. They would change it out on the weekends. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. Um, I went through all the trash receptacles today to there see what was being thrown away. And the one up there was the fullest, and there's bags that aren't associated with any town businesses. So, huh. people, take care of your own trash. Just can't get away from that investigative. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then cars, cars pulling out of the diner going onto Main Street. Is that that's a one-way, folks. Stop Wait, doing it. A little more signage. Yep. We could always use some more signage. Just Jesus. stop we, doing it. There's a billboard year, on this day. Next, next year, could we, yeah. paint, could we paint arrows on that? I was thinking of putting up one-way spikes, so if you drive <laughs> up. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> okay, so the last thing, this is the most important thing, um, and then I'm done. Okay, then I'm done. I, I do have one more thing, but um, we need a cemetery sexton at the Sanborn Cemetery. What are the duties? Um, just what does that entail? Coordinating, um, making sure that all the plots uh, are organized, people that contact you, if you need to meet them at the cemetery, uh, coordinating burials, um, and just kind of being a steward of the cemetery. Does it pay anything? I don't believe it does. 
Okay. Sanborn is East Hyrule. Yeah. Montgomery, Montgomery, Montgomery Road. Montgomery yeah. Road. Yeah. Ed Keen. Yep. Ed Keen used to be the yeah. station. But Casey has more info about that, right? Yeah. Anybody that is wants to do this, um, they can come talk to us. And I always think it's. It'd be a good gig. It'd be somebody in East Hardwick that would like to do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there there are some people who really I'll think enjoy about it. <laughs> you know, you know, keeping cemeteries up. So right. maybe somebody will yeah. come forward. Yeah. So if I had a mic, I'd drop it now. <laughs> I'm done. Next. Good. Next. Next. I'll meet David Upson. For a burial? For a burial? Yeah. <laughs> I nominate I nominate Tom, Tom Fadden for the road foreman report. <laughs> oh, good lord! Uh, sidewalks, of course, have come come to a halt this week because we've been doing just about every other thing I think, including the water leak. Of course, everybody knows about and stuff. Uh, that was kind of a mess. If anybody wants to see what caused it, we have the power over at the down garage. Uh, I can't I can somewhat blame it on our forefathers, but not really. Uh, there was actually three one-inch copper lines that fed into an old brass uh, ball valve and that fed into the old line that fed that street at one point. So like typical stuff I think that we find, find in this town once in a while, once they get done the brand new line, they leave that one live. So that was the culprit down there. Uh, it actually you know, it ate right through some of the threads and everything. So it's been leaking for quite a while. But I think with the vibration of the rolling down there and the paving and stuff, oh. it finally brought it up the surface. So where was it? I don't know. Oh, you can see the new speed bump right at the very beginning of the street, right there. Street? Cottage. So Cottage, Cottage. Cottage Street, yeah. and then across the street from there. Yeah. That's where they uh, did talk to the guy from Hutchins today. He said they will patch it in when they do the pavement up through for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will be taken care of. Uh, we did stay, I start our project this week on uh, Bailey Hazen Road, strengthening straight, that out. Uh, Larry was grace enough to uh, let us uh, store the fill up at his house uh, because what we're going to use it for is down around the corner after we get it all done. We'll put that back down around through there and put some seed down onto her and stuff and let her go. Uh, then we've got some big rocks so we can block that section off too. So that should take care of that. Uh, hoping we can finish up this sidewalk here within the next couple of weeks, so weather permitting and guys are around enough and we don't have any, anything else major breaking down. One ton right now is down at the Ford garage, uh, has two bad ejectors in it. Uh, they had to go up and get it off the Bailey Hazen Road up there for us. Uh, he drove it up there then all of a sudden it didn't start anymore. No so it's got two bad ejectors. So that's down at the Ford garage getting fixed right now. Uh, we're kind of squeaking by with the excavator itself. Uh, that's got a small hydraulic leak on it. We finally got the part for that. Hope we can get that fixed up. But uh, we're keeping our eye, eye on it, but she's she's getting tired. Uh, is it scheduled for a replacement? Uh, well, that's supposed to be scheduled for a replacement next year, along with the grader and loader. So three big, big years. pieces. Yeah. Yes. I've uh, been talking to dealers about it and stuff, and they're looking at six to eight months out uh, for actually getting stuff. Uh, I don't know if they're getting any better next year or not, because, well, we still can't replace the Ford F550 yet because there's none around and they're not op op opening up the uh, build, build jet for the Super Duties. So we have no idea when that's going to be opening back up so we can replace that truck. Um, we've been trying to grade in between the, every other project that we've been trying to get done and stuff. Uh, the guys did haul some stay mat up on uh, Hopkins and some up on Bunker Hill. Uh, crushing. We'll see. Uh, it was supposed to be here in May, June, and June, July. It's supposed to be here now, the middle of August. So we can get, get up in the pit and get some gravel. So we're kind of behind on our roads right now. Uh, so it seems like everything's going to be going balls there this, this fall for putting gravel down and stuff. Winter sand is done and over with. Uh, took tires off the grader today. Uh, sent, you know, we dropped those off down to Pete's tire barn. So hopefully they'll be done tomorrow. Uh, the front tires were pretty bad. Uh, Danny could see, see those because we had one there. We took it down as far as we could. Uh, wires, yeah, yeah. wires were starting to throw, throw through it, so we figured we better get it done before it popped on us. Yeah. Uh, the other stuff we got coming up, I still got to do the sprinkler system, and we got to replace the three foot culvert on Hardwick Farms Road. And the catch basin. 
Yes, in the catch basin on the corner. Sprinkler, sprinkler system where? Depot. For the depot. depot. They're, oh. they're going to do the I gotta outside go around, work. Tee off and go around <clears throat> to the bottom. Brush. Oh, Woodbury, right? Not doing it. Really? They they backed out. Because? It is? Yep. Because, because they, help with because their they said their head, their head broke on their mower. Yeah. I, I probably don't know if it's it's brand new. or not. But anyways, okay. it, it, it is fixed and going again. So I don't, I don't know, Dan. So uh, we'll, so we'll leave mean? it at that one. I know, Casey, I know we're supposed to be opening up the bids here pretty soon, we, right? We put them out. Um, and the other part there. So what's that mean with Woodbury, we though? Received they that called, mean? they just called and asked if we could, yeah. if they could write us a check. <coughs> if, if they could write us a check for last year's winner. And what about this year's winner? I mean. They're on their own? I don't really want to do that to them, but, I mean, we, we're going to have to have that conversation. Right. I mean, it is what it is. Right. They can call Elmore. Yeah, I mean, or we, we, you know, they write us a check and we know what the check's going to be or something. Right. I'm not going to do it for free anymore. It's significantly less than what? Well, they've had a, they had a really good deal for a long time. Yeah. To the point where they took advantage of it. Right. So. So maybe you and I need to go to a select board meeting. Yeah, whatever. I know mean, at the beginning, Dan, we were using them quite a bit. Yeah. But it got to the point right. where our pitch work and stuff like that, we were yeah. short and narrow to the parts. That we where we were dumping, we didn't need all those trucks. Yeah, you know, just to keep our guys no, going. I, and busy. It was uh, it, it was a good thing, but it's yeah. disappeared now. So we got to figure something out. That's yeah. all. Well, they still help with hauling sand, right? Uh, no, no, no. Year. no. What? No. They were gonna. They, they were gonna, gonna, but it, it comes down to the same same thing, years. Eric. Is yeah. that you know when it's raining now, yeah. I want something for the guys to do. Yeah. So that's one thing that we can do with our trucks is haul back our sand. Yeah, it's not our stand. obligation to use them. Yeah. I mean, they're the ones that want us to plow. So right. yeah. they need to compensate us somehow in the way we want, not in the way they want. Right. It's okay. fair, right? Let's be fair about it. That's all. So they were gonna. So that was Woodbury that had the that was doing the mowing, the roadside. They, they have more. They were gonna do. They were gonna go out towards Macville. Yeah. Uh, because that would be shorter for them to come down and go out yeah. through. And then we got word that, uh, or Dave got word that they were going to pay us instead. And we were going to go, well, why? Yeah. You know, we made this deal downstairs, they were going to come with more. And then we got the word that their more broke. So they were just going to pay us. And then I was talking to one of the road crew out there, and he said they got the more all fixed, and they've been using it for the last couple weeks. So they were waiting on a part. Yep. Whatever, let's just okay. yeah, figure it out. So yeah, yeah. It needs to be figured out sometime. Yeah. But we did put some roadside clearing out for bids. Right. And yeah. you did get some bids. We did. Uh, oh. Just three cool. so far. Yeah. Oh, wait. Just Take one. one. Oh. That's not very well, good. Well, I'd say no. that's, and we got a guy then. In my, <laughs> auto, just on that, not, I mean, I said I wasn't going to say anything more, but that, that never happens. Um, I just want to make it clear to folks that if we do roadside clearing, and we use like a Brano head and grind the roadsides, it's going to look messy for a while. Yeah. Yep. And it's just the way it is. So, like. Only for like a year. Like the next year, it yeah, comes right back. Right. right. Paying a crew of guys to, with chainsaws, to go and clear and chip everything, we're not going to get a lot of roads, right? A lot of, you know, miles do done. You could. I'll watch some stuff. <laughs> so. Bits are close. Like I think, I think we're we need to done. like Ward Hill, for example, is needs to be done, and it needs to be well, pushed back. Well, Road is going to get done tomorrow in front of my house. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit my mirror. All right, just don't so, leave any debris in the road. There may be debris in the road. Oh. That's part of the deal. Oh, I don't know where to send my. Down here, enforcement officer. Okay. Hey. We could use it right. down there. All right. So hey, go ahead. No, you're fine. Anything else? No, that's good. All right, that's a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yep. Uh, next up is a police department report, and we have Mike Henry. I'll keep mine short. That's All good. Right. Yeah. Concise. <coughs>
So we, we got rid of the uh, 2017 Cruiser. You did? Yes, we did. Oh, nicely and done. Facebook Marketplace. Just that stuff yeah. works pretty good. <coughs> um, all the other stuff wasn't. That worked pretty good. So we got pretty much what we wanted out of it. Great. Which is good. Um, so we'll, <coughs> I was going to uh, start the process today to get the other cruiser, but it's been really busy all day. Um, we I have the policies pretty much all done. Um, I don't know if I should be giving, I, I can give a copy. I have them all digitized so that uh, I can forward them to the board if you'd like them. It's 400. 21 pages of just awesome reading, if you're interested. <laughs> and, and won't they won't we maybe put on the website eventually? Uh, I wasn't going to put them on the website. I don't know about that. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we need to put them on the website. Okay. You but, looked at it. Hope looked at it, right? Not uh, yet. Yeah. But you yeah. will. Yeah. Your dad's yeah. Right. yeah. So I'm trying to also put those. We have a, a training website that we use called Police One. Um, I thought it was going to be a lot easier to implement those in there so that I could assign certain policies. Um, I'm finding that it's a lot more cumbersome. I have to take each policy, uh, put it into a PDF, download, you know, down, it just, it's a long process. Um, after two of them, I'm like, I'm not sure I want to do this, but <laughs> we'll, I'll see how that's going to go. <clears throat> um, also the website, I don't know if anybody's looked at that or done with that. The uh, Harvard Police website, if you get a chance, to take a look at that. And what's the address? Uh, it's hooked right to our town website. Oh, it is? Yes. Great. So awesome. It's, I haven't seen it yet. It's in there. Uh, a lot better, a lot more information. We've got downloadable forms on there for DMV, forms for us that are commonly asked for. We're doing our press releases on there. Great. Uh, the press releases are actually hooked to the Facebook page as well uh, once they're on there. So uh, we'll try and... Uh, Paul Bernard is one of our, uh, you know, fairly newer officers. Uh, he's great with that stuff. He's doing an awesome job. Uh, awesome. Helping out. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I think the other stuff can probably wait until the, the memo. I think. Item two. What's that? Item two on the agenda. Item two on the agenda. Yeah. I think we'll we'll get to that. A really good question, Mike. And I just heard a couple of people in East Hardwick mention um, that there is somebody who is letting off a siren that sounds like an emergency vehicle, but it's coming, I think, from a residence. But there, I just today somebody was like in the village. They've heard this like it sounds like either an ambulance or like a police car, but it's not. It's like somebody setting off a siren, but you can hear it apparently in like the whole village, just because the village is a whole. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's a way to like figure out. Probably somebody would need to report it, I would guess. Yeah. So just say somebody report it and then you guys will come. Right, but I mean, there's no law violation for that, so. No, no, but yeah. it's just like, I, it apparently sounds like they, like an ambulance or something, right. like an emergency vehicle. Yeah. So yeah, there's not like a noise ordinance or anything like that. It's just kind of um, disturbing people because they think there's a fire right. or that there's something bad happening. But right. it's no, it's just a car alarm going off. Well, I bet about you know, 5.45 I in the morning, every morning, <laughs> summing up towards one side way or whatever. Same it's thing. like clockwork. <laughs> car alarm. We did Paul take the siren out of the old car we got rid of it. <laughs> it's it's not not that. I have a sneaking suspicion that that will stop once school starts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have seen that the cruiser down on Maco Road. You would? A lot. I have. Yeah. Are you you complain? Very welcome sight. Yeah, I complained the other night. No, about the cruiser on Maco Road. No, I'm not no, complaining. I'm, so happy. Welcome sight. I'm very happy it's there. <laughs> you could be there more. Find a me. Right. Will be. Uh, just yep. got a call. A lot of visibility. I called you the other night. I know. I saw that. <laughs> I mean, Thanks, you know, Mike. Fourth of July fireworks are great, but just random fireworks throughout the week. You're not no into reason. it? No. I get up too early and work too hard. And, you know, just for shits and giggles on a Thursday night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I noticed a more visibility of the police too. And Yes, definitely seeing them around, seeing them out around a lot. Yeah. Seeing them out doing highway stuff, seeing them knocking on doors. We knocked on a few doors today. Yeah, no, you guys are doing a good job. All right. 
All right, I'm going to move us on. Item one is Heather Carrington of Carrington Community, Community Development Services to give a presentation about the Downtown Commission progress. Yes. Good evening. So, I welcome. I am Heather Carrington, and I am going to try to keep this very short. I sent Excellent. you a 10 page memo, so I think that covers most of what you needed to know. Yep. But just for the audience who's watching, um, I am the consultant <laughs> that was hired with a Vermont Municipal Planning Grant to assist the town of Hardwick to apply for a downtown designation for the village of Hardwick, and that's through the Vermont Downtown Program. There's currently a designated village center, but applying for the downtown designation allows access to basically millions of dollars in incentives annually for any development that's going on in the downtown. So that's the reason behind doing it. Um, the project is being led by a steering team made up of the downtown commission, and we do have Gary Michaels, Bethany Dunbar, Katie Tandy, and Sherry, your own Sherry Cornish, who is leading the downtown commission here tonight to answer any questions um, that you may have. Um, so the scope of work is really us defining the boundaries of the downtown designation, establishing an organizational structure, so that's the staffing model, the funding model, the board model, um, any committees, which I'm really hesitating on putting in there at this juncture, writing the bylaws, uh, developing a five-year strategic plan, um, and completing the application document, which is a pretty big binder of documents. So we should have all of that together by the end of December. So the purpose of me being here tonight is really to lay out for you the conceptual framework of where we are right now to kind of check our assumptions and see are we moving in the right direction? Are there things that we're missing? Um, are there things that you'd like to see changed or explored differently? Um, so I am going to do it at the very high level, 15 minute, I've crossed out a million things that I had in my notes level. Um, but Fundamentally, we've completed um, some pretty extensive inventory and analysis at this point in time. So key stakeholder interviews have been done, um, and that's with residents, business owners, property owners, town staff, nonprofit partners, a select board member, landlords, real estate developers, and I've also met and spoken with the Planning Commission, but that wasn't an interview per se. So, you know, there's been a lot of outreach to kind of get a sense from people about what the um, assets of the downtown are, what the challenges are with the downtown, and what the priorities are for the community for what needs to be done and the goals of this downtown organization. I also reviewed a 2016 business survey that Gary Michaels did. Um, so it's a little bit out of date, but it was a, an interview with 32 different business owners, and the findings were remarkably consistent with what I have been finding in my key stakeholder interviews. I did a site visit where I walked with Sherry parcel by parcel and kind of talked about all the projects that are going on in the village of Hardwick and some of the issues and concerns that have been raised in the community, some of the um, opportunities that are there. And through all of this, as well as through my review of the background planning documents, so your municipal plan, your regional plan, all, all kinds of demographics, there are several things that really came to the fore, and they are there are quite a few projects that are already going on in the village of Hardwick. So we do not need to proliferate projects. What we need to do is double down and really bring resources to those projects to see those through to the finish. Uh, there's a concentration of town-owned parcels over 10 acres, it's I think 13.75 or something like that, um, that are within the downtown designation or immediately adjacent to what the boundaries were proposed to be. Um, so that's a real opportunity because that is town-owned property that can be leveraged, and that means that you can bring in some big incentives for some of the projects that you've been trying to get going. And, you know, as I was doing the research, I was speaking with Sherry about it, and, you know, looked at, in particular, it was the town garage parcel, and said, my God, that's right next to the Lehigh, I mean, the Moyle Valley Rail Trail. I'm sorry, I've designed a rail trail that was the Lehigh Valley Rail Trail, so I always say that. Um, <laughs> So it, right next to the rail trail, some real opportunities, and was told in that conversation that actually you all have been trying to do something with that parcel for quite some time. So this offers an opportunity, by including it in those boundaries, it offers an opportunity to leverage some pretty serious funds for town projects as well. Um, also, obviously, I'm sure this is not going to be a surprise to any of you, there are very highly visible vacancies and underutilized properties in the downtown. Um, for example, the old bank building, the Hardwick Gazette building, you know, and, and there are other areas as well. Um, and lastly, very, very clear to me, just walking around the, the times that I've been here as a pedestrian, 
circulation patterns are really, really confusing. So it, it's not only, you know, the vehicular patterns are confusing, but pedestrian patterns, bicyclist patterns, you know. So there's a need for a real investment in creating accessibility and clarity in the infrastructure. And in all of the key stakeholder interviews that I've done, that has come up time and again as one of the priorities for what really needs to be done. Um, so I, I think that I have a pretty good sense of the direction we need to go in. You know, I laid out um, in your packet, and that packet should be available, I believe, on the Town of Hardwick website after this meeting. So anyone in the audience who's interested in seeing that, 10 full pages, lots of information there. So feel free to take a look at the full report there. Um, but some of the assets that you have going for you, you are a traffic and uh, and population hub in the area. So within you know a 23 square mile radius, the highest traffic volumes go through Hardwick, go through the downtown of Hardwick. Um, there are really clear visual cues that show that you are in a downtown, and that is not true across the state with every downtown. Um, there are strong downtown businesses. There's a strong sense of community. Um, there are great grassroots and institutional partners that are organizing um, and working communally. And there's a lot of collaboration going on. Challenges, confusing traffic, pedestrian, bicycle circulation patterns. Visual cues are disconnecting your downtown from Atkins Field. So I heard a lot that there's a need for a large gathering space but there is a large gathering space, and it is a five-minute walk. Um, but you can't tell that because the visual cues make it look like it's far from the downtown. So there are things that can be done there, again, with infrastructure that can make that connection so people understand that you do have gathering spaces in place. Um, yeah, <laughs> you have limited town staff. Um, to be out gathering what incentives are available. I mean, just keeping track of what grants are available is really difficult. If you don't have a ton of staff to do that, a downtown organization can help to do that and can help to leverage right grants and make sure that those the highest priorities are being leveraged through the state as opposed to local funds as much as is possible. Um, and then you have some really good momentum with current projects. You've got the LVRT being connected up. So that offers an opportunity to connect to that, both for Hardwickians to be able to access downtown off the rail trail, but also for visitors to be able to do that. You have some recently purchased vacant properties and some developers who are interested in working hand in glove with the town on goals that you have in mind. Um, you have all of the town parcels within downtown, and there is a huge influx of state funding right now um, through the ARPA funds. In particular, there's a giant influx of housing funds, so there's a possibility to really pull that in to make sure that you're bringing in the types of housing that you need in the community to have a full range of economic integration within downtown Hardwick. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons that there's a perception that it's low income within the village um, because there is um, not a full range of income level price points uh, for housing within that area. So I think there's a missing middle that can really be addressed and that might be something that a downtown organization can assist in planning for. So recommendations um, structurally. I am recommending that we, ex that we uh, expand the proposed boundaries and I've given you a map in your memo of what the expansion would entail, but really the reason for this is to incorporate the town-owned properties, mm -hmm. to maintain continuity on both sides of the road, um, on key road corridors for purposes of streetscapes, wayfinding, alternative modes of transportation, and balancing any potential future development. Um, align the downtown designation boundaries with zoning district boundaries wherever possible. Um, I worked for the city of Minuski for five and a half years, and they have a downtown, a commercial zoning district, a tax increment finance district, and all of them have different boundaries. So we constantly have property owners who are confused about, no, I want to apply for this incentive. Well, you're not in those boundaries, you're in these boundaries. And so it's really confusing for people if you don't align those as much as you possibly can. Um, and then uh, create flexibility for the town to leverage existing resources, so the properties that you own to access the current unprecedented funding at the state level. And I'm really thinking about it in terms of a 50-year horizon when I look at it. So while you may not be interested at present in doing something in particular at um, 
Hardwick Rescue or at the town garage or at the police department. Um, over a 50 year horizon, you might want to leverage some of those funds to be able to do some of those projects. So I'm really giving you the flexibility long term by expanding the boundaries that way. In terms of recommendations for the staffing model, you know, you run a tight ship here uh, and it's a small lean team. I come from a small lean team in the city of Winooski, so I understand that that is always going to be a consideration. So what I would recommend is that you do uh, staffing for the um, downtown organization that's a part-time executive director at 10 hours a week to start. And that that's a shared staffing model with the town staff who is currently the community development coordinator, so Tracy Martin. And I've spoken with Tracy about that and about whether that seems like something that might work. I've also spoken with Opie about that a little bit. Um, so that would leave you not needing to raise as much funding to be able to have that downtown designation. And at the same time, what it would do is it would, be sh it would ensure that town efforts and downtown organization efforts were absolutely in lockstep and aligned so you're not duplicating efforts anywhere. So there's absolute communication between the town and the downtown organization. Um, and duplicating efforts is something that you really can't afford to do when you have a lean team. So, And then um, lastly, the recommendations, these are draft recommendations, you know, more uh, wordsmithing to come. But the priority goals for the downtown organization, the way that I am looking at it currently, would be fivefold to bring state and federal funding to downtown Hardwick by writing grants and exploring other funding sources in order to capitalize on all available outside resources for town of Hardwick priority projects. Two, improve downtown Hardwick's infrastructure by acting as an ally with the town of Hardwick, providing energy, input, and staff time to address bicycle and pedestrian access, wayfinding, parking, lighting, streetscaping, accessibility, connectivity, and other infrastructure issues that may arise. Three, maintain and encourage downtown vibrancy by providing a, if you will, one-stop shop for business and property owners seeking information and technical assistance with accessing available downtown incentives. Four, address high visibility vacancies in downtown Hardwick by leveraging available state and federal resources. And five, support downtown grant list growth to augment the local tax base. That is all I'm going to say out of that 10 page document, but I would love to take any questions that you may have. Um, I love that the um, lines are adjusted to include the Creamery Road property because that is something that we're, we are trying to replace the town garage. Um, so, and Rescue does is actively looking for a new home, so it's great. I'm um, wondering if you, um, and I think that part of elementary is within the boundaries yes. as well, but I, I didn't think Hazen was, or is it? No, no it's not. And, and certainly we could consider doing that. Um, one of the things that I did as part of my analysis was look at all of the 23 downtown designations to see um, what their acreage is, uh, what their perimeter is, what the walking distance is from the furthest end to the furthest end. And Hardwick's ask is on the lower end in terms of acreage. It's on the lower end in terms of end-to-end -end walk um, because we will have to make the case that this is a reasonable downtown. So I think there's room for expansion if that's something that you're interested in. I'm, just, I'm not sure. I just It struck me that, yeah. that that's also a, a, town, a, a town property that, or jointly held union property, but it's if, they're fun, if it accesses funds, it yeah. might be useful. Yeah, but there's a. It's not a continuous, really business-wise. Like, you can't go up the hill. I'm sorry, I just missed that. Just sorry. saying, there's a break. There's residential in the middle, and it makes it a little bit tricky, according to what I've understood about yeah. expanding the uh, designated area. That, like, it, it stops right now. It currently stops at the kind of at the at Creamery Road, really. Right. And then it stops, it doesn't go all the way, it includes the library, but it comes down and, and stops there. It doesn't go down Church Street, for instance. And doesn't include the Heart of Electric building? Uh, I don't, no. I think it does, maybe. maybe. And Hardwick, Hardwick Area Health Center, or the Dental no, Center? No, it doesn't include the Dental Center. 
it doesn't seem like that much of a stretch to go to include the electric department, the dental center, and Hazen. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's worth we it. I don't know if it's it. involved. I'm we just asking the question. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to look at it. I'm also happy to speak with Gary Holloway um, at the state, uh, the director for the Vermont yeah, Downtown yeah. Program, and he is also on the line um, oh, if, if he great. feels like jumping in. But um, I'm happy to talk with him about what would be reasonable and what would not. You know, I'm trying to keep it so it's within reason for the size of the community and for the traffic volumes that are coming through and so the connectivity overall, you know, yeah. basically, a, will it pass a sniff test as a downtown? And there are a bunch of things that I would use as that sniff test. Mm -hmm. I would potentially include the, if, if Creamery Road is a part of the extension, I think it would not be a big lift to include the health center mm -hmm. And the dentist, because yeah. there's just in terms of economics, mm -hmm. those are two really big employers. They're also on the LVRT, mm -hmm. and they've been doing a lot of work on the LVRT by the parking area. Mm -hmm. I think to incur, like, I don't think that would be a huge mm -hmm. addition, and I think it would also create kind of a cohesive line of businesses. And it gets both sides of the street on those right. streets too, which is yeah. something you pointed out before. Yeah, and there are new sidewalks now. To yeah, and there are new sidewalks to take advantage of. <laughs> on one side. On one side. Get funding for another side. <laughs> but I just want to say, Heather, this is awesome. Thank, thank you so much. And just so we kind of understand the timeline, so we've put together this report. You're presenting it now, and then we are. Can you just kind of recap the timeline for when we present it to the state? Yeah. So I will be coming back. What I'll be doing is taking the feedback that you've given me, um, and you know tweaking anything that I need to, and then getting started on doing the actual strategic five-year strategic plan and writing the bylaws based on you know this, the overall conceptual structure here. I'll come back to you all in October um, with a very refined presentation to, to show you what those are so that you can give a sign off on that. Um, we'll be submitting, um, I you know, the project deadline is to have this completed by the end of December, so my hope is to submit it in November. Okay. So if we have feedback before the October meeting, when would you like that by? You can send me feedback anytime. I think I put my email right in there, so feel okay. free to email me directly with okay. any, you know, if you come up with something later on that you'd like to share, please do. Awesome. Thank you. I think that did the bump up to the include Creamery Road, did that also go up and include the police department? Yes. Okay. And that's as, pretty much as far as the, if you went up as far as the sidewalks go, that's kind of the police department on one side and Hazen on the other. Mm -hmm. Look at it like that. Where there's sidewalks, yeah. there's downtown. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and where the sidewalk is. Those are used to downtown, eh? I mean. Yeah. All right. More questions? Thank you for bringing this to us. Yeah, um, it's great. And thank you very much for the time. And it looks like we are right in the window we should be. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. It's been great working with you, Heather. Thank you very much. It's been great working with you guys. We have a really committed team here. I mean, amazingly motivated team. Yeah, it's good. All right, next up is item two, select board to receive an update on police staffing level certifications as well as budget status, the plan, et cetera. Wow. Ooh. And it, uh, yeah, I saw in our packet we had a, a great breakdown that's just, I like that. It's concise, it's clear. This is how many people we have. Thank Casey for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sorry about the numbers though. No, but we can see it. We can. <laughs> like, there it is. There it is, buddy. You can contemplate it now. It was something that we've been struggling with. Like, what yes. is it? So here it is. Here it is. So, uh, yeah, currently the uh, full-time uh, patrol officers, we have uh, the level two. You can see it on there. Yeah. Uh, two at level two. And then, uh, you know, now we have uh, uh, one at level three and then myself as well yeah. at level three. Um, uh, you know, we get the sergeant, um, the five part-time part officers. Now, this is where we're, you know, we are saving money on where it comes to benefits, retirement. Um, they're not getting anything over time uh, with that. Uh, in addition to this, what we're, we're trying to work with is uh, we know the budget's a lot tighter for labor this year. So I've worked with... Uh, I keep want to say Governor's State Highway, State Highway Safety. State Highway Safety. 
I apologize. It's not governor's anymore? No. no. Oh. No. Okay. So we are supplementing our budget uh, with uh, when people are out doing uh, patrol work with those funds. Uh, when they're responding to calls, we have to go off that funding. When they're doing uh, other police work, they have to go off that funding. So we'll try to utilize those funds. We have, um, well, I found out we've got $23,000 to use in the next two months. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what we're going to get. So their, their year ends uh, October, or begins October, October 1st. Yeah, yeah. So then I have to find out uh, how many more funds, but uh, people haven't been utilizing them. So I have a pretty good contact there. Um, he's good, willing to work with us on this to try and supplement our budget uh, with this. And that would be I'm, I'm that. sorry, I'm just with the AC in my ear. Do you mind just speaking of a tiny Yes. Bit? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was just talking about supplementing our I, labor. I got you got it, that? I just, okay. I yeah. Just, yeah. 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 The, I just want to let you know the ACs. <laughs> we can turn it off. But we have it. We can turn it off. Yeah. Serial number 003 on the uh, <laughs> so, so, so that's great. That's it's, labor. So we're supplementing our labor with the, with the state highway with patrol. Right, which, which is great. Right. Because it makes sense. It's a good fit, right? They want yeah. you to patrol. We want to patrol. Right. And you can use the money for it. And but that's we don't. Through, through the end of September. Just for the next two months is what I've got. And approximately, we don't know how much we're going to get next year, but if we don't spend this 23, we might not get right. more money. 23, yeah. 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 Okay. So, so we don't know what the funding is for the next fiscal year, which starts on October 1. Right, we do not. Okay. We don't know what they're going to give us. Is yet. that partly because the federal budget needs to pass? It's federal which, money. And yes. last year that passed in like March of the following year, and it was really late. Okay. Yeah, we should. So we yeah, we're going to get something. We'll, yeah. we'll utilize that uh, a lot more than it has been and utilized is, in the past. And is that currently in our budget for this year? That twenty-three thousand. That so that's on a revenue side that that's going to help, right? Yes. Okay. It's not in our budget at all. Great. Right. Um, so. No, I think it is. It, I think some of it is. Oh no, no, not, no, not for that. No, not, not the state, not the, anyway. not the federal. Not the federal. The federal funds are not in the right. budget at okay. all. Okay, okay. So this is something that I've, okay. we've already. Yeah. So this is got. this is a net help to us. Yes. Right. So that's kind of a strategy that we've talked about is using these using as much of the grant funds available. Yeah. To subsidize the budget. Yeah, that's and, great. And with the um, distracted driving. Yeah, there's three different uh, <clears throat> things. There's distracted driving, there's occupant safety, and then DUI. Uh, so between those, uh, DUI was $6,000. Uh, distracted driving is 9000 and then 8000 for the uh, occupant safety. So mm -hmm. there's three different pools that we're taking from right now. That's for that, that's, that's what totals that 23? Or yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And and we have to use them in certain ways while yeah. we're out there. So, yeah. And, uh, and typically that was only allowed to be done on overtime, so beyond the yeah. scope of a regular yeah. beyond the scope of yeah. our regular pay. Yeah. But we were able to be able to do that on regular That's shift. Part. Okay. Right. Great. Right. Uh, and so that almost closes the gap then between. Well, I see a forty-one k to gap. Yeah. Oh, when you add it all up. Helps. When you add the overtime budget. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't adding the overtime. Plus Aaron's salary. Mm -hmm. yeah. That doesn't right. count. That's not. That doesn't count. No. So where is see that? See the two asterisks. Does so, not count the chief on pay. But that's still. Well, that's what I'm saying. We right. got to add that. Right. He said that's right. additional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The additional yeah. cost. Yeah, it's additional expense. <clears throat> we so in Un a, unavoidable. I yeah. agree, but. It's, it's an expense. It is what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> so in other areas in the budget we're saving on, we have one officer that takes health insurance and four that take the stipend. So a family plan, roughly twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay, so we budgeted for fifty four thousand. Our actual is gonna be about forty. So we're gonna save about fourteen thousand there. Um, so we're just kind of so we're whittling away at whittling it. Whittling away. Yeah, yep. that's uh, good. That's all I need. 
That's yep. what I need. And then um, that's all we can do, right? Right. Situation and then we're in. with retirement, um, uh, that's going to change slightly with overtime. How much overtime we pay to retirement because it's part of your their salary. So um, we're slated to save between three and four thousand there. So we're just kind of picking away at that. I've also have um, our community development coordinator looking at other grant funding for things like um, our communications mm -hmm. bill. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're trying to find ways to supplement subsidize the PD um, with with other funds. And I don't think that strategy has really been used in the past. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, it, it sounds like we've got. Pretty, either pretty either, close either to. it's really quick with numbers, or <laughs> but it sounds like with that, that, with that, yeah. with as Danny said, with that whittling away and with that potential revenue, but we don't really know exactly how much it's going to be. Right. It sounds like we're fairly close to getting to covering that forty-one thousand dollar yeah. gap. Oh, but yeah. but my concern is still that what we're paying in that paid administrative leave and how we're going to make up for that this year. Um, most of it was paid for, la it's still the new fiscal year for that, right? So we're still... No, we just, just we were, July 1. We were okay. Just, and we were okay. I think we were like, last year we were okay. <clears throat> well, minus the Greensboro right. thing. Right. Right. Um, so okay. yeah, yeah, there's I definitely mean, strategies. Just as long as we got it, as long as we're aware of it, I mean, we can't right. avoid it. So. Right. And, and then um, there's also potential for... Um, reaching out to other towns, which is on my slate. Um, we've also talked with VAST, and they would like us to patrol um, parts of the rail trail, because they're, con they're concerned about the speeding on the rail trail with snowmobiles. Um, Does that mean we get to have a snowmobile? That means VAST <laughs> would pay for snowmobiles and pay us to do patrol in Hardwick and outside, potentially outside of Hardwick's boundaries. Because Hardwick has one of the longest lines, right, right on the yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So there's a potential for, there's, there, are, there are, are potential revenue streams out there. We just have to decide if that's something we want to go for. And, and we have, you know, we're, we're, our staffing level is, is pretty healthy. Um, a lot of departments aren't as healthy as we are, um, but, with that full staffing, we can actually reach out and help other communities. Well, I think it's amazing considering when you, you and Mike started, we basically had two people. So I think it's incredible right. how much we've built in a short period of time. And that's really a testament to the two of you. Um, just want to make sure we can keep affording it. <laughs> I agree. I agree 100%. Um, but is this so just in terms of like how overall health of the department does this is this feeling better in terms of as if we've talked about this before when we lost the greensboro contract like what's kind of the the perfect number for heart for the 24 7 coverage but then also there's this fine line of you know how many more do we need if we want to contract with other towns so is is basically five full-time plus these part-time officers is that feeling healthy enough for the town that's healthy enough for the town, yes. Okay. And, and it's getting us the coverage that we need. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's there's a minimum staffing that you need just to run it. Yep. So adding another town in there, and you know, if we add in speed contracts for other towns, we want to be careful what towns. Right. And how much we add? We've right. we've right. added some towns have approached us, and it's just there's no way we could cover it. We don't want it. We don't want to. We could, yeah, but we, we don't want to. We, we talked about that with some other smaller towns where right. the, the amount of money wasn't really worth sending somebody over there. For right. Because you take, you know, um, you, you add more investigations. You add more, you know, right. running the roads. We certainly can't. we got to be in the business of not losing money. You know, I agree. I agree. Same thing with Woodbury. Yep. You know, we don't mind helping you out, but we can't be doing it for... No, we can't be doing it for free, so we right. can't. We can't. That's the way it is. You know. um, but we could be in a good situation with, you know, um, there are other towns that are looking for more coverage than what they're getting. Good. Good job. So you're going to continue to have those conversations as as it as we opportunities get, present themselves, and, and and as we get to a healthy um, 
operating capacity with solid morale and good workload, you know, we want officers in our town patrolling our roads. Right. Mm -hmm. And when they're ready, we can offer that service outside of our boundaries. And, and so what I'm hearing is a lot of talk about maybe just contract for specific services, Correct. which is different from the previous contract with Greensboro, Very which different. was really, we'll cover your whole town 24 seven. Yeah. Every, any call for service, right. any alarm. Yeah. Yep. We covered them the same as we covered Hardware. Right. Very, very right. more service specific contract. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're talking about contracts that be like, we will do speed patrol, speed patrol for X number of hours per Correct. week for some period. Right. That kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. That's Got it. it. And it could be could be more, but that's it could be. More be specific. But it would be defined. It wouldn't yep. be just blanket. We'll cover your whole. Right. Time. Right. And it could be just for you know um, July through. September. Right. Because right. whatever or they need. Whatever they need. Thing. And yeah. what works for us and right. would work. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a huge difference between motor vehicle stuff, you know, patrol and break ins. And in investigations. With investigations and such. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So I really appreciate having this conversation, having the, the numbers. It helps a lot to have just a little bit of clarity about where we're at. Yeah. Well, it would be great. This is maybe a conversation for Casey, but it would be really awesome just because this is such an important part of our budget. I think it'd be great to have this when we do maybe quarterly for okay. the next year or just kind of a, an update. Um, it's been great that we've been able to hire so many people, but I think it's nice to have these numbers separate from the overall yeah, report. Yeah, if we, if we were able to look at this, for instance, when Casey brings a quarterly yeah. oh, report and just when we're looking at the PD, we could look and say, all right, so yeah. for that quarter, how staffed were we compared to where we want to be? Right. How does that look tracking yeah. forward? We've been seeing it a lot as we grow and grew here. We really see it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so, for all your work. And it could even just be this if things haven't changed. We could yeah. keep at this. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully one yeah. of these things will change. Yes. Soon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, that was what we needed. Uh, item three is up. up next. You're up next? Yeah. <laughs> you, that's you? Safe streets for all? Yeah. Uh, grant and discuss that the town should apply for this grant. Yeah. Because he volunteered to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what you volunteered for last time. <laughs> yeah, Casey's on the, on the thing. But we, so I was going to do it. Tell us what it is. I so I forgot. Report and he went put me on the agenda. I've forgotten it. So. Tell so me what it is. This is a grant planning grant for the for safe, essentially for focused on safe. Tracy, do you want to speak or do you no, want me to? I, Tracy's here, but no, I think you're doing fine. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Paul, Paul, or uh, uh, David, I don't know why I said Paul. Okay. Ghost yeah. and I and, and Tracy met today. And she did an excellent job of looking into this grant, figuring out exactly what it was, and basically re recommendation is it may not be the best fit for what we're looking to do right now. Okay. Um, and the planning commission felt the same, and so did I, because it, okay. it was a federal grant, short deadline, like September 15th, lots of work, lots of maps, and then we really didn't have a project. She, she looked into it at depth, not at depth, but more than me, uh, and said that it really, we had a, not a very good chance. So okay. um, so the focus is going to be on, Tracy, what was the other grant that? Uh, so um, uh, there's a state grant program called Better Connection. Better Connection. Oh, yeah. Which, which uh, we went for once before and apparently just barely missed getting. And I think if we work closely with those folks uh, to reapply, we'd have a very good chance. And. We identified a couple of other potential um, funding sources, the TPI money that NBDA gets. Um, if we do get to be a designated downtown, the transportation fund becomes available to us. So we have a couple of, uh, a few other options that, that this could help us. Really, yeah, that would be a $40,000 match. Without necessarily going to the federal huge <laughs> right. yeah. source. So it was a, a fairly short but good meeting, and Tracy's doing a really good job of of looking for some funding. Great. Uh, yeah, basically, we, we also hit on the forty thousand dollar match was kind of a, in yeah. many ways. A and we all agreed that we just have just not ready to do a, a, you right. know, make it good enough. 
yeah. we have a lot of projects on the table that we, we do need funding for grants yeah. for so maybe uh, we can look into that so yeah that's Speak. it great Speak. There's, there's another um, Tracy correct me if I get this wrong but there's a transportation advisory board yep. um, that, that meets with uh, that part of NVDA yeah and we they don't meet very often but we currently do not have a representative from Hardwick on that board no, because they don't really talk about it with their representative from part. I didn't even know it existed. Right. Um, so the, it's kind of interesting. So we're going to make sure that somebody from Hardwick is at we the table. We want to seat at the table because yeah. we yeah. haven't gotten, we haven't benefited from these funds for 16 years. Not since they yeah. did that so, traffic yeah. study, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That, that we a, have to look at for everything because it's the only thing we have. Yeah. To we haven't got money from those funds for 14 years. 14. The last was a study in 2008. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, high time. Yeah. So, that can be there somebody from the select board or somebody from the planning commission, but yeah. we're, we're definitely, we're going to push. person. Who we're going to, yeah. 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 We uh, want to see it at the table. Good. Good. Just all this talk about grants and state funding and transportation makes me think of the transportation alternatives program that has funding that could work for our swinging bridge, but I don't know if the time is going to, those grants come out in the fall, so soon, but it may not, I don't know if we'll know, anyway, just thinking out loud, I don't know, I don't know if we'll know enough about our project by then to. Tracy's doing a great job. She really is. Thanks, Tracy. You had a lot of good things to say today. All right, and move us on. Item four: Select Board to discuss town-owned Kerry Road property and if they're interested in selling it to Kingdom Bent LLC for housing. Um, these are the folks that came. Yeah, last Josh. Time. Josh Oakley is on. Josh is on. Yeah. Hi, Josh. Did we take this off? I did. We miss item three, or did, did I we skip take something? No. Nope. That was Danny. That was me. That was we just did that. That's not the no. right agenda. Oh, I don't so have the current this. agenda. Wait, Never mind. Do you have last week's agenda? No. <laughs> anyway. Um, so we oh. asked you to put this in the That's agenda the because the we, at the That's end of not. the last meeting, okay. we said we should just have a conversation about Cary Road in general. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that's, Casey put the field card in yep. the packet. Um, so do we want to do that right well, now, I, I would, like a general conversation? Or mm -hmm. or maybe we just come up with some questions to, I have some questions for Josh so that we could email. I, yeah, so my thing is, is I think whatever we do with this property needs to be public. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bid or yep. we need to think about the property before we talk about a specific plan. Yeah, we need to think about how we're going to how we're going to deal with. A, how are we going to sell it? How are we going to sell it? Those things. And, and what's the process? What's is, the it, process? is it a bid or is it like That's request right. for proposals because we want to see what's going to happen? Right. It's a valuable piece of real estate that we yep. have been granted. That we should. It's got to be a public. I don't think we can look at a project before we look at how we're going to deal with the property first. Because we haven't talked about it at all. Yeah, right. right. Not, right. not a bit. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. part of that was because there was a period of time right. that we had right. to wait. And I'm all for Sauna. And, and, uh, and I'm all for this project. But I think we need to. Well, that is just to clarify for people out there that the only reason why developers have approached the select board about this particular property is because the town owns it. Normally, if there's a developer that wants to do a project, they go to they go through um, Kristen zoning and permitting, and they go to the owner of the property. So, not every development developer is going to come to the select board for this kind of stuff. I don't know that people totally understand that, but you know, when when this property landed in the town's tax sale, tax sale in ownership of by the town. Um, it also had, we had to wait five years. I think that back then we were thinking maybe it was going to be a way to expand our industrial space. And um, so there have been other ideas around this property, but now we know that the biggest pressure that we have is 
providing additional housing because the entire state needs more <laughs> housing and we don't have it, there's nothing available in the market. So just, just, I just wanted to like, you know, because Put it in context. we don't generally talk about individual properties like this right. and we don't right. have this kind of, I've never on the, when I've been on the slip board ever had this kind of a thing that we had to like decide about, you know, so. Right. That's it. I mean, I think the big thing we, I, I think that's a really good point, Sherry, because we aren't necessarily used to thinking about it, right? Thinking about property in this way. Um, to me, like the most important thing is, like, is conditions of any kind of sale. So, and we we'll probably won't come to those tonight, but I think maybe tonight what we could do is come up with a timeline for ourselves of maybe we put together, you know, we've got the assessment, maybe we put together some, some, thoughts or research or like ask questions of Josh or Casey or whoever, but to really think about, okay, what are the, um, if we're going to sell it, I guess the, as Danny said, A, are we going to sell it? Are we going to think about selling it? And if we are, what are the conditions of that sale going to be? Is it going to be open for bid? Are there going to have to be state permits ahead of time? Are there going to have to be, are we, like, whatever those are. Um, but I think we have to kind of come up with those ourselves first, because it's, our own property and then we can say okay Josh you're welcome to apply or yes we're interested in selling this or, you know what just using them as an example um, but it's a good way for us to think about how we want to use this property I think it's pushing us to make a decision about it um, which is a good thing and if we're generally strategic about it we will end up with a, a good like like whoever takes this property on from us, hopefully, um, actually does something, and it doesn't end up in limbo for yep. a period of time that we're just like, you know, yep. I, I, yeah. And that could be a condition of a sale, that it has to be that X amount of the project has to be done at certain times. Yeah, so. just to avoid, you know, they're much bigger projects, but, you know, to avoid having holes in the middle of our... Yep. Does it make town. sense? We, we all volunteer for plenty of things, but does it make sense to come up with like a small quick and dirty carry road so task committee. force? Task force, yeah. yeah that's so that I, think it, I mean, so I think we, the questions we need to decide on if we all need to be involved in. We want to sell it. If we want to sell it, then how are we going to sell it? Fair market value? Bid? I mean, we can figure that out. We all need to decide. I don't think a committee is yeah. Well, I, I think... I don't know if we really need to do it right this second, but I think we need to decide. But if, I agree, but I think that the idea of having a couple people outside like look into it and try to put together like here's here's something we could do might give us a good framework for that discussion if people are willing to do that. Um, I mean, I think we need to sell it. I, well, I'd like to sell it. I mean, the other option, other possibility, I guess, is to lease it. Right. I kind of am not that psyched about that either. But I think we uh, so you could. You know, if we look at it like any real estate yeah. property, um, we need to market it. So in that request for proposal, um, what are we marketing the property for? Housing, industrial park, like right. we, I think we, like, need to decide I agree what with that. Kaylee that we have to come up with uh, what, we're, we need to market that property, what we want to use it, what we would like to see it used for. I don't know are the legality around um, making a condition of the sale and having them right. be, you know, there's got to be four acres of green space and, you know, the certain lighting conditions. I don't think we can do that. I think legally. those things are dealt with through uh, development review boards. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So I mean, um, we basically got to decide whether it's something we want to sell and how we want to sell it. Yeah. And I would think that I just shouldn't sell it, but I think it's going to have to be competitive bid on fair market value type of situation. And I would think maybe with the request for, you know, have some sort of proposal along with your bid. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I think at I least it maybe it wouldn't have. To, I don't. I don't care about that so much, but I think some people will. I think if you, someone buys the property, they should be able to do anything that within the boundaries of zoning. I mean, there's plenty of rules already. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we should, yeah. as a select board, tell a landowner he should do anything if the 
before he buys the property because there's other people that. Well, Steve certainly tells you. <laughs> Although it isn't else. because we do own it, it is an opportunity, and because we think of it as one of these last sort of developable right. areas, and yeah. it's close to. Well, the we down. certainly have. So I mean, we decide, so we. Right. We, so it's an opportunity to ask yeah. people to to present a project like the um, like the Kingdom Bend. Well, the only thing is, people have yeah, done. but we don't want to make the sale process so complicated that now we're weighing right. lowest bid against uh, highest. Uh, Sympathy vote, whatever, not sympathy, but you know what I'm right. saying. So, feel good project. Now we're weighing feel good against cash. Yeah. So. No, but you could weigh a, a, you could weigh cash sale of the property against the cash Which, sale plus yeah. the effect of the grand list, yeah. for so, example. I don't. Yeah, I, it doesn't matter, but I think we need to have that figured out before we sell the property. I whatever. think it might make sense to put together a small group to figure that out, Danny. I'm happy to volunteer to do it. <laughs> And I think it might be really helpful uh, to, when we have the next conversation, to invite somebody, uh, I happen to know somebody in my immediate family who deals with bids a lot and deals with these projects a lot, somebody to help answer just general questions about like state permitting, what that means, what like, who can just kind of be, who is not necessarily somebody who's going to be bidding the project, but who can just kind of speak to Kristen. Kristen. Kristen, knows Kristen knows about that. Well, Kristen knows a lot yeah. of that. Yeah. 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 It could yeah. be Kristen. Could be. Yeah. Could yeah. Just have a meeting. Maybe we just invite Kristen. But. Um, yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, it's really we we got to decide if we want to sell it. Or not to sell it. All that stuff all will play out. But that, you know, Does anybody not want to sell it? I guess my question is really more for the town, like for town of like, do we need it for the road crew? Do we need it for anything in the highway department? Do we need it anything for sewer? Those are my immediate questions. Like, do we need it for the PD? Rescue expressed interest, I mean, but they be better also. place to hide for us. Yes, <laughs> it'd be a better place to hide. <laughs> and well, you could look down on the, the hard electric easy. people. Yeah, from there. I mean, I don't. I'd like to clean off that pile of sand. Yeah, it's that's not all, good sand though. It isn't. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's good sand to build a factory on. That's what I'd like to see. I mean, housing's nice, but you got to have jobs. There's only a two-inch line that runs down yeah. through there. Right. Any housing development or anything like that, you might have to go all the way back to the Harvard Place Department yeah. in order to run a You're four-inch gonna main or something like that down there's through the state highway. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. There's issues down through there anyway, so. Okay, but so those are still kind of things accessible. we need to talk yeah. about. Yeah. I, yeah. That's, that's a really good that's a Yeah, fact. we really should need to know. I mean, a, a serious buyer is going to want to know all that. Right. Before they purchase it. All right, so. Sewer wise, it would be fine because it ends right there on the other side of, uh, what is that, Dollar General? Dollar yeah. General. So that'd be easy enough to tie into about water. It's just too Especially for housing right. development and stuff like that, with sprinkler systems probably. And well, if it, right. what is the problem with that at Dollar General? What right? they proposed well, before was. Sprinkler? But you got all the trailers all on that line. Yeah, snack bar property something. That's a two inch line that goes. Is Willie on that? They on Village Water up around? Yes. The yeah. Oh. Willie and Alfred Willie up around the corner. Smith down the street. Are they on water? No. Smith is it. Smith. But isn't. those other two houses, Lance Lance and the other places. Yeah, but they have their own two separate lines that actually run through the Lake Department Doyard up over the bank, to their place. So right. then you have a two inch line that runs through so Ainier's trailer Ainier's park, park down and down. then feeds behind okay. the snack bar and then so, down. So, um, Which you couldn't upgrade that route. You'd have to go down I like the down. idea of Kaylee uh, taking this uh, <laughs> yeah, sure offline. Oh boy. So, uh, with you now have two, two children. <laughs> <laughs> you'll help, don't worry. Yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> Might be some yeah, finger paint yeah. on this presentation. <laughs> I mean, I don't um, mind. If we need two of us, I don't mind. There we go. Participate. <laughs> Any problem solved. Anybody else? <laughs> yes, I'm doing this, Danny. Every yeah, they can bring in. They're going to have to bring in. Yeah, they're they're going to have to bring in. Oh, like Kristen. Kristen, Tom, yeah, we'll see whatever. Figure out what we can figure out. Get some Great. I'm more than happy to yeah, weigh you in. Too. Great. Yes. No, you're, I'm you're always well. available. Yes. Great. There we go. We have to have Tom, too. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to move us on because. Okay. I will go. Yeah, we can do it next. Josh, I'm in the next. Okay, this one's going to be easy because we're going to table it. Yeah. I have oh. a draft so resolution. Yeah. Also, um, the only question. thing I'll hand it out. Sorry, we're moving on to item five, which is a cannabis uh, com 
Control Commission. Um, we got that resolution, which uh, yeah, it's right here. But right. So, so essentially, you're saying, which I agree with, that de by default it's us. But if we want to appoint other people, we can. Yeah. Good. Good job. Yep. Yeah. Or by default, it's the select board. Or by default, it's or, the select and, board. And then how are we going to do that? Um, should we name the areas of folks that we want on the commission? Stakeholders? Right. I would just or, use that word. And then, okay, so. Unless, unless somebody wants somebody specific, I don't. Do you want to limit it just to Hardwick? I would think. I would think, right? That's the only jurisdiction we have. Okay, so the problem is, is what if somebody works for like the health center and they don't live in Hardwick? So we're talking about a can, but we're talking about licensing people. We're talking about for a, a a local cannabis control board. Right, but what that control board does is it controls retail cannabis. Correct. So why would an out of town, or how would that affect us? We're not going to let them out of town. Because right? stakeholders in the community. Oh, on the commission. Yes. I have a question. Right. Could. Or so like if somebody from PD wants to be on it, but they live in Stannard. Right. Well, that would be a PD representative. I mean, so so what that's we, what I'm saying. So like, what we could do, so on, right. some, on some things, like for example, the town manager, the town manager has to live in Hardwick unless the select board makes an exception. Okay. Yeah. So we could do something like that. Yes. You yeah. live in Hardwick I mean, unless we yeah. make an exception. I, I think, yeah, I think it's a harder thing. I mean, when I look at the police department and the town, you know, hmm. it's a representative of that department, not necessarily an out of town, it wouldn't matter. Yeah. He's a police to HPD representative. But as a citizen on this board, you should be from Harvard if we're making Harvard decisions. But if, you, if you're bringing special expertise, you don't have to be Harvard citizen. Uh, like police? Well, the police is a... But Danny, this has got. I don't care. <laughs> what that means. <laughs> but Danny, I'm hungry. We have to. We have to. We have to. I don't care who's on. I'm on it, so that's all. I'm <laughs> we, have, we have to lay this out in this resolution so it's clear. Yeah, I, I so find people it. don't look at it in ten years and say, "Well, I was what just did they voicing mean? my opinion." Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I think we could just say, "Why don't we just say, leave it the way it is now?" Because it's appointed by the part of select board. So yeah, exactly if we don't put any perimeters on it, then. <laughs> Well, it's just we, what Eric was saying. We, we could say no. Yeah. You're not allowed to be on. Somebody could. We want people from Hardwick, not from wherever. We could say I, that. I'm all about. Or we could say, you know what? You're on the police department, and we do want you on this. Right. So this is just saying we, about, we make the decision. I'm all about that. Yeah. 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 For sure. So, all right, and then term lengths, and then or should we have term lengths or and or how do we remove folks? <coughs> I know. Uh, I just want. I know, you're right. I um, people. Um, can it just be set up sort of like the way that the um, electric electric commissioners yeah. are? I can do where that. There's okay. term limits so that yeah. you, so they have to be reappointed well, by the select board. Yeah. And they yeah. have to show interest I'm and be reappointed. That. If they're not on the select board, After. they'll follow. I'll make another paragraph. So okay. would we then have to, would our, the only trick with that is we're all on different terms as select board members. So would we have to then match up? No. 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 No, because the select board member is the select board member. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know this is a life deal? <laughs> look around. <laughs> yeah, look around. We have no three hairs. <laughs> um, all right. Just I feel model like, it after the... Okay, so what, what I just want to be clear about is I feel like that we were kind of rushed into this whole process, and I don't want to continue to rush into this whole process. Uh, great. That's a good decision. So, so you're going to take that back and work on it? Yeah. Okay. Great. Perfect. Back yeah, I hasted, I, you're exactly right. I hastily joined this thing. We're going to do it for Saturday. All right. So, so that's okay. good? Yes. Okay. So excellent. Thank you yep. for continuing to follow up on that. Next is select board reports. I still have one. Uh, Even I thought we took yeah, it away. I, well, I got another. I'm just a busy little beaver. All right. <laughs> uh, we're going to be working on the Hard Rock Woodbury Rail Trail the next week, mm -hmm. and the trail up around back to the sawmill and stuff. So everyone be aware there'll be mowing and digging and all sorts of activity. 
Is this is the log yard still going? It looked pretty empty when log I yard is not going. No, it has been. It got broke into. Somebody rambled through all my stuff. Mm-hmm. Made me mad. Made Kenny mad. Broke yeah. some windows. You on it? Uh-huh. He made a report. Right? He made a report. Yeah, Kenny Davidson. Yeah. There's a thousand dollars reward for him. Yeah, he put up a thousand dollar reward. They just vandalized. Yeah. Sprayed fire extinguishers. Broke some glass. They took the cover off my snowmobile. Hopefully. Probably going to drain the gas tank just as a safety precaution, but no, just pains in the asses. Sometimes we've talked about when properties on that rail trail or the rail bed okay. become, when they change hands, it might be a good time to reestablish that rail through there. Yeah. <clears throat> well, nobody would like that to change hands more than Kenny Davis, right? <laughs> I can guarantee you that. I would love to find a a use for that property. I thought it'd be a great space for incubator space for yeah. uh, light industry. Like you know, yeah. I would rent. I like I rent down there now, and you know, the Barkley boys could have their yeah. wood processor there, and the welder could have his bay there, and you know, the, 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 the lawn care guy would have a bay, a heated bay, where he could work on his. I think stuff. you should do it. I think I wish I had the time because there's probably Grant Tracy still on. <laughs> <laughs> But I also thought that'd be a great thing yeah. for a great that's space a, for us. Yes, and a good space. Um, sorry, back to trails again. So you're working yeah, on Hybrid so anyway, Rail Trail. Hybrid Quick Bear Rail Trail. Previously, you talked also about the um, Wright Farm Wright Road. Wright Farm Road, as soon as RTP, as soon as Sherry gives me the green light, we're going to be up there. So I that could even be hips, this year? My hip is going to be, it's planned to be this fall. Okay. My hip is being replaced on the 19th, so that way. Of which month? <laughs> September. We should go right up this. All right. So I'll have at least a week off. All right. I think maybe two. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we may not. RTP's still. A, okay. It's, we can't but start. The Hardwood Bay Rail Trail, though. Hardwood Bay Rail Trail is right. Trail is right. There's a right. go. Okay. Awesome. Other reports? Sure. Um, voting on. Tuesday the 9th is at the townhouse. Is that is primary. our Hardwick primary polling place. And is there at the townhouse? And is there still a, um, uh, a public service to announcement about Justice of the Peace? Trying to get people yeah. organized for that. Justice of the Peace. There's. And what do you have yeah. to do for that? Uh, visit the town website and look at the description. But so the deadline for uh, being nominated or for putting your name forward is this Friday. So, talk to Tanya. You mean tomorrow? No, next, sorry, next Friday. Next week, Friday. Okay. So, anybody interested in Justice of the Peace, we're a little bit short this past year, which means we're a little short for Board of Civil Authority because those folks serve on that. So, it would be great if anybody's interested in being in Justice of the Peace. Plus, you can perform marriages. Yeah. Which anybody can do nowadays. Well, right, yeah. Yeah. There are other benefits, too. Uh, you can count votes. You're invited to count votes at yeah. the town meeting. It's really fun. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a cool club. Yeah, you get to see the inside of the firehouse some years if you're counting votes. And this year you will be at the townhouse. Woo, townhouse. Has been decided. Yes, for the primary. Primary. For the primary. Oh, yeah. And then the general election. General election in November. Townhouse. All right. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Any other select board reports? Yes, the historical society is presenting a program on the 10th, which I think is next Wednesday, on how to search the newspapers online and not spend all day getting good results. Five o'clock at the depot. What day? Wednesday. Wednesday. That's a legit issue I have when I try to search. (laughs) Danny needs to sign up. All right, any other select board reports? Uh, Any new business? Old business. Somebody's got a reminder down here. Uh, yeah. So he missed. Uh, he missed the communication from the audience. Oh. Oh. Okay. Everybody <laughs> else. I was just wondering about the uh, what's happening with the library over here. Yeah. If they were ever going to have a, a a personal vote in the town of Hardwick on that uh, to pass the amount of money that's going to be put into it. Unfortunately. I don't know the answer to that question, and um, I don't know if anybody here does. So there was a bond vote a few years ago yeah. for the five hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. There's no scheduled bond votes. There's no scheduled votes for to commit any more public funds. 
but, but we did commit right. by 550. Right, but that's been voted on. Thirty five. It's already been voted Yeah. And then there was 35,000 that was, um, that was the ARPA funds. with the ARPA funds that was just given to the library. But if, you're, if your question is, um, when is that project going to get financed and get built? Well, I, I don't know about building it. I don't want to see it built. Oh, okay. You know, a lot of people don't. Okay. You know, but see, then there's another thing in the town. Uh, I talked to the guy that owned the newspaper here quite a while ago, and I said, you know, why don't you charge $2 a paper for the, for the newspaper here instead of a dollar, and you'd sell them out in no time. I don't have a computer. So I don't know a thing that goes on in this town at all, unless you come up here to talk to somebody or, or whatever. And th that, that was another thing right there with him. Mm -hmm. I saw him down the, down the uh, diner one day. And I said, why, why, don't, you, why don't you get $2 out of uh, paper, out of your paper? And, uh, and do it, well, yeah, he says, I'll look into it. Well, he wasn't much looking, he just didn't do it. Yeah. I think so at our last meeting, we had a conversation about this, yeah. about the about the library, and it was decided to not, like, we're not putting any, we're just sticking with the bond that the voters already said yes to three years ago, right? Two years ago? Mm -hmm. So there's not going to be another vote that we're aware of for more money to right. the library. Yeah. So is there anything is going there? on with the Swinging Bridge? <laughs> Good question. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're going to run salt and rules. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like you need to come see the yeah, town manager. Yeah, you can come to my office and I'll get, I'll give you a tour around town and tell it, tell you what's going on. How's that? Oh, okay. I'll be your gazette tomorrow. Right. Well, what was it? I, day before yesterday, I came down. They got the uh, bike path thing right up through the main street. Those. That's about this those are temporary know, lines. That's going to be gone. Right? Yeah, yeah. Some some old lady came out. From where the co-op used to be. That's not very nice. No, I know. There's nobody old in here anyway. Okay. So <laughs> she she just looked at me like that, swung her door right open. Yeah. And I went around her and she just stared and bleed. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's a wonder I didn't take her door right off. Mm -hmm. They don't they just don't care. Right. No. No. And Spring Street is a drive strip. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna tell you that again. 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour up through there at night. Yeah. It was a uh, SUV went up through first, then he must have been doing 70, and a motorcycle right behind him going up through there. There's nothing you can do, you know, to, to stop these people. They yeah. seem to know where the police are. Mm -hmm. But one thing I saw, the, a police officer walked through <coughs> on a bike. Yeah, right yep. That was a good thing right there. Park him in somebody's driveway and watch him with a, with a gun. What kind, what, what, kind of what kind of guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, he could have been the guy. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank but you. Anyway, we'll you get should. on to Spring Street. That's right. I'm done complaining. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Thank you for coming. Uh, Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you. Take care. Yeah. Did somebody want to talk about our ARPA funds disbursement under old there's business? A, there's a memo in the thing. Yeah. 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 So basically, Wiz, Casey, and I met to talk about how we were going to disperse the funds that we committed. Yeah. So basically, we're going to treat it the same way we do appropriations. The organizations that we said yes to have from October of this year until next year to request the funds. Mm -hmm. And then we're asking that they provide a report similar to the way appropriations oh, no. reports are provided. Okay, perfect. Keeping that's, the model the same. Great. Yeah, that's perfect. It was simple. Love it. I thought it was great. Yeah. Awesome. That's it. That's it. All right. So I need a motion to go, go to executive session. Correct. Second. For BSA 1311396. Yeah. And so we have a motion from Danny and a second from Kaylee. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, you should note to include the town manager and uh, council. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And we're Great. going just right downstairs? To council. Downstairs? Yeah. Your office, right? Yeah. All right. Let's do it.